Hello Hanji Kidda, what's up people? It is match day and the mighty Tractor Boys, we're away today as we take on West Ham United. Before we get into anything, you know we got to do the shout outs. Massive shout outs to Angel Care Homes for all your care needs in the Black Country and Birmingham area. Massive shout outs to Mark Darcy for all your formal menswear needs. And of course the Desi Ballers highlighting all South Asians at all levels of the beautiful game. I'll put their details in the description. Make sure you check them out. And of course, we're on the road to 5k. Not two, not three, not four, but five. Like Looney says, we want five on it. If you ain't already, hit that subscribe button. Everyone smash the like button and turn the notification bell on. Now let's get to it. So I did a match preview the other day with none other than Steve-O the Madman. Arguably one of the funniest West Ham fans. One of the most famous ones as well. Um, and we sat down and we discussed all things West Ham United, how he got into following West Ham, how long he's been following them for, and of course his memories of Ipswich Town and how he thinks the game was going to go today. If you haven't seen it, like I said, hit, hit, if you haven't seen it, I'll put it in the description. Make sure you check it out. And in there, he gave us his insight in terms of how he thinks West Ham will be. They need a win. We need a win. But we're probably in a better place. We've come on the back of four draws, so undefeated in four. West Ham, you know, there's a, a, a large group of players that have come in. It's a new manager. Hasn't really gelled. That's that famous gelled word that we heard so much under Cookie. But hasn't really gelled for him just yet. Hopefully it doesn't gel for him today. And I feel we've got enough about us. So in terms of team lineup, for me, I'm going for Murick in goal. Left back. The man that should be called up to the England team. For some reason, Lee Carsley went Stevie Wonder and doesn't see him. But Mr. Leif Davis, how long do you think it is till he finally gets his first England call? Put your thoughts in the comments. But yeah, Davis left back. Greaves, yes, I know he made a slight mistake, but he's been solid. So he made that slight mistake last week, but he's been absolutely solid throughout. So Jacob Greaves and that partnership with O'Shea, I thought that was really good last week. That's just flourishing. And right back, there's been a few rumours about maybe Axel's injured, this, that and the other. I mean, for me, yes, we've got Ben Johnson as a more than capable backup. But, you know, if he's fit, it's Axel Twanzebe. In the middle, a return to the Olympic Stadium for Mr. Kevin Phillip. In the middle, a return to the... Uh, in the middle, a return to the stadium for Mr. Calvin Phillips. I'm hoping he has a good game today. And, of course, that partnership with the skipper, Mr. Sammy Morsey. And in the front three, just behind the attacker. So I've gone for Jack Clark on the left. I thought he was brilliant the other week. I think in the 10, Sammy Schmodix, I think that's his strongest position. And certainly away from home, where we're going to be hitting teams on the break. And he can run in behind. I think his running power, his pressing ability is going to be valuable. And on the right, none other than star boy, Mr. Amari Hutchinson, who really is finding his feet in the Premier League at the moment. And of course, up top, Again, Steve and I talked about him the other day. Likened him a bit to Harry Kane. Is he the next Harry Kane? But Mr. Liam Delap. So I'm feeling confident. I'm going for a 2-1 town win. I'm parked up. I'm at the Westfield Shopping Centre. Apparently there's two of them. Good thing I checked that before I left out. Or was I end up on the wrong side of London? And why have you named... Two different shopping centres, the same thing. Like, come on, Londoners, man. Sort your shit out. This is why people outside London hate London, man. But anyway, that's another rant. But yeah, parked up, round the corner from the stadium. I'm going to catch up with a few peeps, and I'll see you all in there.
camera. <laughs> so hit it. So hit it. Shoot! Big up Mark Darcy, gang gang. Oh, too easy. Oh, He's standing in front. Who's got him Go, go into the international break. Ben Johnson volleyed it back to him. That's very liquid, like what's going on here?
saying about that one then peeps before we get into anything we have hit a thousand subscribers on youtube so absolute love to every single one of you that are subscribed and if you're brand new here please hit that subscribe button and everyone smash the like button and turn those notifications on the road to 5k starts now we want to hit 5k, so that's 5,000 subscribers on YouTube by the end of the season. And you know, the love that you guys have shown over the last sort of 9, 10 months. Has it been 10 months now? Yeah, 10 months we launched in December. So over the last 10 months gives me faith that we will grow this channel to at least 5k by the end of the season. So if you haven't, like I said, because there's about 48% of you that don't subscribe. So if you haven't, hit that subscribe button. If you have subscribed, absolute love to you. But now, go and make a YouTube account for your, your dog or your cat or your goldfish or something or whatever, right? Just get, just get some more subs on here. And the reason for that is the bigger the channel gets, the bigger it gets in the algorithm and all the YouTube world. And it puts us in the right kind of spots. And based on that, we hit a 1,000 subscribers and I was able to sit down with none other than Steve-O the Madman you know, social media OG, fountain knowledge when it comes to football, you know, gets millions and millions of views on his kind of stuff. And I was able to sit down with him and preview West Ham and Ipswich. And that's all down to you guys, all the love that you've helped to grow this channel. But yeah, man, absolute love to all of you. The road to 5k begins now. So like I said, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, smash the likes and turn the notifications on. But on the flip side, if you do want to support the channel and you've got a bit of extra change, you know, maybe that ACA's coming on this weekend or whatever, right? You can support this channel by donating to the Ko-Fi link below. So it's in the description. Click Ko-Fi. It says buy me a coffee or whatever. We've got goals there. But yeah, man, like I said, love to everyone that subscribed. The road to 5K starts now. But let's get to it then. So like I said, I sat down with Steve on a madman the other day. We previewed West Ham v Ipswich, you know, his, his experiences of West Ham over the years and how, you know, his memories of Ipswich Town and then what we thought the uh, score would be and how the game would pan out. Now, I was feeling confident, you know, they're, they're a team that it hadn't clicked for and you thought, well, as long as it doesn't click, you know, we can go there and get an upset. Um steve -O, as you've seen, hopefully clicked that link. He, he predicted that they were going to thrash us. Um, got the score wrong, but he certainly got the result right. But in terms of the game, very quick start from West Ham. Antonio, player I've, I've liked for years. I know he's towards the end of his career, but... Um, well, not at the end of his career. Maybe he's coming towards the twilight of his career. Maybe that's, that's the right wording. Um... But, you know, it's that one-touch finish, bottom corner. Defensively, I don't think we were set. You know, we should stop that ball coming in. That's one. Um, and then, you know, we're not touch tight with the defender, um, with Antonio. So, you know, he, he's got the space. And you don't want to give Mikel Antonio any space in the box because that's what he does. So, I think it was like 50 seconds or something silly like that. But, yeah, it was like, bang, okay, 1-0. And then five minutes later... We we're up the other end, and Liam Delap does what Liam Delap does, you know. So, scoring goals, give the ball and he will score. That's literally the thing, you know. He's now what four goals in six games in the Premier League. Like, we need to have a serious conversation about Liam Delap being the next Harry Kane, 
and that's something me and Steve were talking about the other day. So again, if you haven't hit that, watch it. Very interesting discussion. Um, and I think, you know, to be honest, we are looking at the next Harry Kane there. I know I don't want to, I know people will say, oh, don't overhype him, they're this, that and the other. But please find me a striker that's as good as Liam Delap at his age. There isn't, you know. Um, he will be leading the line for England in years to come. I thought after that, we were really growing into the game. We were having some chances without really testing their goalkeeper. Um, we were getting forward well, but I think their fullbacks were, um, you know, they were, they were solid, to be honest, um, and, and knew what they were, knew what their job was. But yeah, you're thinking, OK, we're growing into it. Take 1-1, one, one, go in at half time um, and then come out second half and attack them. But West Ham had other ideas. Um, ball comes across. Um, I don't want to pick up players, but again, the, we need to be stopping those crosses into the box. And then it's just a, it's a calamity. I wouldn't even say errors. It's just comedy defending. Um, things I thought we'd left behind in League One. But the man gets the header. It hits the bar. Murik, okay, he, he's scrambling. I don't think he can do a lot there. But you've got three defenders there that are just ball watching. We didn't react, and kudos, is it? I don't know how you pronounce his name um, there, but, you know, probably the easiest finish he's going to have all season. Not sure what the um, picking the seat up and sitting in front of the Towns fans is about, but it seems a bit tin pot or whatever, but I don't know, maybe West Ham fans, you can explain that to me, because the man went, got a stool, and then just sat on the stool. Are you doing photo shoots now? Is that what it is? I don't know, but anyway, yeah. 2-1, and you think, okay, let's take it in at half-time. We know that when we're behind, we always step up the gears, and, you know, hopefully we're going to come out and, and, and you know, make a real good attack at it. At first 15, 20 minutes of, that, of the second half, it was all West Ham. And you were thinking, this is going to get dangerous. And within those first 20 minutes, you've got none other than Mr. Jared Bowen, who, again, phenomenal player. I picked him out um, in the preview. But phenomenal player. He runs. Could the defenders do better? Again, it's down the other side, and I, I ain't watching matches today. I'm not really gonna. Don't really have any plans to anyway. Um. But yeah, it's a really good finish in the bottom corner, and you just think he's got past all these bodies and fired it across, and not one player's managed to block it. It's disappointing considering how well we've defended in the past against teams like Brighton and Villa and stuff like that. So. That was disappointing. Um, I wouldn't say it's a soft goal. It was just disappointing. But then the fourth one is a soft goal. It's literally, a, it's what I call a FIFA goal. Man runs down the wing. Bowen runs down and he, he was really good. But he runs down, squares it across and Paqueta has a open net to tap it into. But yeah, 4-1 to West Ham. Well deserved. You know, I don't think any, even the most hard in Ipswich fan would agree that that was a, a well deserved uh, result for West Ham. We simply were not good enough. I don't want to call out players, but I think there's important conversations we need to have. So we need to stop the crosses. It's as simple as that. And Ben Johnson seems to be the latest scapegoat at the moment. Yes, Axel is a big miss and, you know, he's a huge player. And what I'm hearing is it's probably going to be the Man United game that he's back for. So we're going to be without him for the best part of six to eight weeks. Um, So Axel's out. So you're going to have Ben Johnson and Harry Clark. Let's not get on their back. They're all young players. That includes like Jack Clark and Ben Johnson. And, you know, these are still young players that need to find their feet. So let's, you know, in the ground, let's back them. And one other thing I just want to say is fans are leaving at 70 minutes. What's that about then? Because I thought it was followed the town up or down. Maybe not. So I don't know. One game and one performance will not define our season. Let's not let you know this performance uh, negate all the positives that we've had so far this season. You know, the performances against Liverpool, against Villa, against Brighton, against Fulham, like even you know Southampton grinding that out. Even at City, we were one 0 up at the Etihad, but it doesn't. You know, yesterday's shit show doesn't define our season. But yeah, man, I'll catch you at Everton. 
Might be dropping a video next week, but I'm doing my own international break, so I'll be away, but we'll try and get some content out. I've got a few ideas and a few things. So again, make sure you subscribe and turn those notifications on so you know when the video's going to drop. But yeah, man, I'll catch you all at the next one.